The human body is our first classroom. The human body is our last classroom. The human body is the classroom within which every experience of our experience of the journey of life is experienced. The human body is the foundation for the enigma of consciousness. The human body is the vehicle by which we are delivered into an experience of flow with the animating force. Interplay is an international movement exploring practices and methods of fun and play to access the depth and height of human experience using the gateway of the body. www.interplay.org Following is a short excerpt from a conversation with the founders of Interplay. Even when we started the work that we're doing, you know, Cynthia and I have been collaborating for 30, almost 39 years now. Um, and even the, the, the more recent part about uh, Interplay, which is more like 20, 28, 29 years. Um, oh gosh, that sounds so long. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I've been pretty lucky at, at actually figuring those things out and, and paying attention either quite consciously or sort of consciously to what I was supposed to do um, and what was going to be best for me and where my gifts lined up with, you know, the need in the world, what I perceived, what I might have perceived that to be. Um, so that's the main thing I think that there's, I've managed to find a kind of um, stasis, stasis isn't a very good word because I feel like everything's constantly moving, but this kind of balance between what it is that I'm particularly good at and I feel called to do and the gifts that I seem to be have given and, you know, all the other parts of me that might make it possible for me, for example, to sustain working on a movement for 30 years, you know, even that, or to have a, a collaborative relationship that lasts almost 40. Um, I mean, some of that I just... I just chalk up to, you know, genetics um, or upbringing. So one of the words I use a lot to talk about um, what I feel like I, one of the things I try to, that I have tended out to live, tended to live out in my life is to be steadfast, which I think goes back to my upbringing and, you know, there are a bunch of steadfast people in my life, so it doesn't surprise me that I might be one too. Uh, so it could be something as simple as, okay, I'm willing to plod. I, kn I know the value of plodding. Um, and I often say I've not really had any big ideas, but I've had a lot of small ideas that have added up to big ideas. <laughs> um, and so I'd somehow I've kind of had, I, I had either knew that or was willing to follow the path that was leading in that direction. So that's really what sustains me is that it's in line. Um, the things that I might be doing and um, that I'm capable of doing or good at doing and the things that I enjoy that feed me, um, that's what makes it possible just to keep going on and on. And, you know, as an artist, as a creator, uh, to, use that, to use that frame, that understanding is, is a, helpful, uh, a helpful frame, too, when you're thinking about uh, organizational life. Like, one of the things that I do is I... I'm really interested in how organizations work um, and have had a, a number of opportunities to kind of have, have that play out, to be able to use and kind of mess with institutions and organizations so that they can work well. Um, so I'm just interested in how, um, how, that, how that process works. Um, and, and as an artist, I can see that organizational project, uh, process as a giant art project. So let's say this work that we've done over the last um, 30 some years, you know, I just think of it as a, 
as, as, a, as a really big art project, which means I'm willing to do the little, the little things that will keep the project going. You know, if you're an artist, whatever your form is, you have to do all these nitpicky little things, you know, you have to clean the brushes and you know, whatever the thing is that you do, you have to put in the hours, you have to do the little steps, you have to, you know, even the th parts of it that you don't particularly like in order to get the result you want. Um, and so it's helpful for me to have that frame of, you know, this is just like a giant art project. I often talk about the, you know, things that, that ac there, there's, there are accidents and there's providence. Um, and I'm definitely a believer in providence, but I also understand that that's, that's a belief. You know, that thing that happened, was that an accident or was that providence? Um, but to have um, a collaborative relationship, I mean, that's kind of amazing, I think, for two people who, are, especially two people who aren't married, uh, who aren't partners, uh, to have worked together for so long and so, so closely and so intimately. Um, so I've been really lucky uh, over time, um, in particular in this relationship with Cynthia, but in, with other collaborators as well. Well, I just was just leading a little group, and my truest service, I believe, is if, like St. Teresa of Luzo, if I could be really the little flower that I am. Um, it's very hard for me to believe that in my culture, to be a flower in a garden. I mean, I'm a human being. What is my service? You know, um, so like on a on a on the most primitive spiritual level, that you know, I would like to be that. That that is what I hope to be. But as a you know, as a creator, as a maker, the to to be an artist uh, is such a prophetic, um, blessedly challenging, beautiful, gifted. Uh, service. Oh, I'm so lucky. I just count my blessings every day that I'm an artist and that Phil and I have figured out how to hold ourselves, you know, financially uh, stable enough that we can, you know, remain artists because <laughs> I think that's very hard. Um, that, but that to be an artist, to be of service as an artist is, and not to have to tie finances to the, to the, to the flow, but to the, you know, the productive elements, the technology itself, you know, that's, uh, that is a service. Like, this will far outlive us, um, as so my friends tell me. Um, and I believe them, uh, especially when people of color tell me that. This will outlive you, and we, your, our children will benefit from this. I don't know how many of them there be. You know, could be five or could be five thousand, but um, that's a service. If people are more uh, loving, gracious, kind, full, uh, healthy, and not necessarily bigger and better <laughs> like I'm trying to be, <laughs> you know. My dad was a lover, you know, an expressive, crazy engineer. And, you know, he hugged me in such fullness. And so did my, you know, my mom. You know, I, I'm so lucky. <sighs> so the, that parental love, um, I found very foundational. I know that both Phil and I have had that. We're very lucky. Because I know how that's not that doesn't come to everybody, um, but then with also within that, I was anointed by an energy beyond, from beyond, and that energy was unconditional and it was neutral. It wasn't some mushy gushy love. It was bizarre. It was like it lit me up in a way. It gave me a point of contact for a love that like no other. And for 30 seconds, like an earthquake, I felt that love as unconditional. And that I was like looking from that point of view at everything unconditionally. I felt it in my body, what that love feels like, you know, from my experience. And it's unconditional and it's neutral. 
And what did that do? It evoked my love. It evoked a torrent of endless desire to respond to that. And, you know, that little moment is what woke up this, well, what can I do? How can I serve? And, and that's what woke up the idea of trying to hold dance and religion together, which was my question. You know, how can I you know, take who I am? And that seemed to be what came up in that moment. Um, but whatever it is, I, you know, even if that, I mean, that's like, like one of the questions I'm at constantly. It's not just dance and religion, it's body and soul. And it's like creating and, you know, the, what do these art, human arts do? And like, I just come at that every day with, now I don't even think about it, but it's probably that same response to that moment. Like, it's endless. I, I can't. Or I'm just irrepressible. <laughs> 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 Which someone has said about me. But I, I feel like that is, um, I feel like Phil and I do share a kind of a template, a beat on a kind, this, whatever this love is that doesn't require anything back. I personally do. But that love doesn't, you know. And I think somehow we found each other. So, and there's a, like, it's so efficient uh, when we are generally working well together. We don't ask a lot. We don't, we're, we don't have to because there's a fire that isn't, you know, that's very cool and it's pretty constant. Um, and, and also get, we have a lot of separation from each other as well. It doesn't require us to be inside of each other's everything. As a as a as an artist, I feel like too, I'm not even I'm not even required to keep doing anything the same. I'm not required to do anything. I can I have a shrine workshop. You know, I go off and do all sorts of art things. Uh, I'm not required by this to do anything. So that kind of freedom. Wow. If, in, if I, you know, maybe, maybe my life work is just to see if I could get anywhere in the neighborhood of igniting that for another person as a human being. You know, if I could just pass any of that on, that would be, you know, successful. And I, I know I have it's been in the neighborhood, you know. So that's a, it's a transmission, you know. <laughs> maybe that's what a good, you know, good teacher can do is hopefully transmit some, some of the good that they're getting they've been lucky to get. <laughs>